、ステリオツーをやってきました。そう、ここに来るためにですね、来たんですよ。デスパルハウスワイフズを見にですね、はい、やってまいりました。どの映画があるのでしょうか、行ってみましょう。Hi, I'm Olivia. I'm your tour guide. I know. Thank you so much. And we've been working on a new show, actually. It's going to be starring this lovable, foul mouthed teddy bear coming up over to your left. Ted! What a charmer. Don't trust him, though. Don't trust him with anything. You know why? They're making a television show based on the hit movies Ted and Ted 2. And if you take a look to your right, you might see the. Now you're going to see these sets to your left. This is where they built the big obstacle course for America Ninja Warrior. Built the big obstacle course down there. Now we call that street New York. And we really just build the front and sides of buildings. We call them facade. So the sets just have to look real enough on screen. They don't actually have to be real. But enough of the big city. Let's take you to a beautiful place called Skull Island. It's the original King Kong. But, but... Here on the tour and in the lot. They usually leave us alone, but I know. You're distracting from these picture cars, Coyote. <laughs> Look at these great cars to your left. <laughs> We got a Transformer, Bumblebee, over to your left. Some classic Back to the Future cars. It is still watching us. Oh. We got some prehistoric Flintstone cars. Now, these are fun, but not very practical. These Flintstone cars don't have any engines. They had to be pulled along on set by a cable, making it look like the Flintstones run those cars with their feet. We got the gyrosphere from Jurassic World, a van and a boat from Jordan Peele movies, Nope and Us. And check out this Bradley fighting vehicle. Looks like a tank. On the outside, that's really just plywood painted to look like steel and iron. Makes that vehicle a lot lighter, a lot easier to move around the set compared to an actual war vehicle. But do not take that into battle, because it will not put up much of a fight. Oh, that is not. What's that noise? Ah, ah. Oh, no. oh. A mechanical practical effect, so we can turn on and off the rain with just a push of a few buttons. So we're gonna have ourselves a little rainstorm. Here's some lightning and thunder, audio visuals to help set the mood, and we're gonna make it rain mostly just over to your left hand side. So keep looking at that left side area. Let's make it rain right about now. And this rain is a result of an overhead sprinkler system, which shoots the water straight up into the air and lets it fall back down to the earth naturally. And here's how we have complete control over the weather whenever we need rain for filming scenes. <sighs> well, that's kind of relaxing, huh? <laughs> I know, though. It's a beautiful day. Let me turn off that rain. As you can see, it turns off immediately. See? It's off. Huh? It Oh, hold on. Rain off? Why is it turn? What is that? Oh, no, take cover. Take cover now.
call that in. I know we had a drop item, but not safe to get out here. So we'll call that in. So we'll be able to come and pick that up. So hang tight. Uh, oh. Hey, that whole thing. Effect. A lot of famous cowboys, actors, directors have filmed here. A few years ago, director Quentin Tarantino was here filming Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. They did a big oh, yeah. scene with Leonardo DiCaprio, put a lot of dirt down on this concrete road, made it look like the dusty old west was back in action. Steven Spielberg filmed here for his film The Color Purple as well as Amistad. And we feel pretty close to the hit sound stages of The Voice. If you're fans of The Voice, they film in stages 30 and 31 to your left. That's where the big stage is set up. They're in the middle of filming season 24, so that's pretty exciting. Genovia in Princess Diaries 2, a royal engagement. I know, royalty. Another Disney movie, Cinderella with Brandy and Whitney Houston. It's possible, so much royalty right here. And also a whole lot of history. Now our classic monster movies of the 1930s, Dracula, The Invisible Man, Frankenstein. It's been just over a hundred years since The Hunchback of Notre Dame, filmed right here on these sets with silent film star Lon Chaney. So these sets go back over a century. Back in the 1930s, this whole area swarming with these classic monsters. I think we always only think of monsters. Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman, Bride of Frankenstein, The Mummy, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Take a look around. Now, personally, I love it here. It's my happy place. Nothing ever bad ever happens. So uh, just remain seated, though, as we make our way across the dock. Wait, what is that? There's a, uh, there's something in the water. That's a fin. You see that? There's, that's a shark fin. Is someone out there? Oh wow. I, uh, I don't think you were supposed to see that. Please disregard what you have just seen. We'll continue on with our tour. Everything is fine. Wait, why is the pier moving? Uh oh. A lot of productions filmed out here. This beige and white house to your left. Jimmy Stewart lived there, the 1950s film Harvey. This purple house of the porch, that was 1313 Mockingbird Lane in the Munsters. Yellow and Stone House, if you are fans of Never Have I Ever on Netflix, that is where Davy and her family live. They filmed out here for all four seasons, really took over this whole area for the hit Netflix show. And as you can see, it looks pretty realistic. These houses, they're three-dimensional, fronts, sides, big open backyards. And we can actually go inside and film a whole interior scene. It's big enough for the actors to spread out, really create a scene. Big enough for the camera crew to fit in there. So we can do big rooms, family dinners, kids doing homework inside. And then come out here and do all the outdoor scenes, riding bikes, mowing the lawn. And it saves a whole lot of time when we can do all the filming in one location instead of switching to inside of a soundstage, even though it's right on our front lot. They did that a lot for the show Ted. It's going to be a Boston neighborhood in the upcoming show. And they did that for Desperate Housewives. Still looks a whole lot like Wisteria Lane. There is one thing everyone in suburbia can appreciate. It's a good neighbor. A lot of famous people lived on that street over the years. Tom Hanks lived out there in the Burbs. I mean, a whole franchise, the Fast and the Furious franchise, has really been built on picture cars, right? Built on cars, built on family. You can check out Fast X, streaming on Peacock now. It's the beginning of the end. Such a fun ride. Psycho came out in 1960, directed by Sir Alfred Hitchcock. And the main character, Norman Bates, works in the Bates Motel, and he lives up here in the house. We call it the Psycho House, and... Oh, that's him. Norman's home. Yeah, he's on the porch there. Oh, hey there, Norman. It's good to see you. Hi, how's Mother? 
<laughs> Norman. <laughs> oh, he is not happy to see us at all. And we'll take it someplace much safer, as you can see. <laughs> the crash site to Steven Spielberg's War of the Worlds. Believe it or not, this is an actual 747 Boeing aircraft, weighing in at over 375,000 pounds. And it's where Tom Cruise's character hides out. Universal Studios Tour. Give yourselves a big round of applause. Could not have done it without each and every one of you. Well done.